The Arctic's actually a desert characterized by a tundra environment. Trees don't grow here because of low temperatures and short growing season. The ground remains frozen, permafrost, just below the surface year-round, and only low-growing vegetation such as shrubs and grasses, lichen, and mosses emerge during the brief summer season. The Hudson Museum features collections from the Canadian Arctic, Greenland, and Labrador. Some were collected by the museum's founding director, Richard Emmerich, others by military personnel stationed in the region during World War II. These objects document traditional Arctic material culture, largely everyday objects, such as gear for hunting and fishing, clothing, and models of boats and tools. The people of this region are the Inuit, the word for people in their language. They are hunters and gatherers who live traditionally in skin tents in the summer and igloos in the winter. Here we have examples of boat and sled forms. The kayak is an indigenous Inuit invention. It's a one-person boat that was used for hunting marine mammals and transporting meat from the hunt during the summer season. The frame is made from driftwood or whalebone and covered with a waterproof covering, often made from walrus hides. It's extremely maneuverable and was propelled by a double-bladed paddle. In addition to kayaks, larger open boats called umiaks were also built. These boats transported people and goods from winter camps to summer hunting grounds and were used for the summer hunts. Like the kayak, the frame was made from scavenged materials and covered with walrus hide. During the winter season, dog sleds provided the main source of transportation. Dogs were essential to life in the Arctic, moving people, goods, and gear over frozen ground. The sleds were pulled by dogs harnessed in either a fan hitch or in a gang line, depending upon the terrain. While some groups in the Arctic also used snowshoes, not all did, as the snow in the region was generally hard packed so that none were needed. Individual possessions were limited as you could only take with you those things you could carry or load on a dog sled. Essential items included a soapstone lamp, which used chunks of blubber to render oil and produced heat and light in the igloo, ulus or women's knives used for food processing and preparing hides for clothing, tents, and boats, a snow knife for cutting blocks of snow to make an igloo, and bows and arrows, spears, harpoons, and fish hooks. Arctic clothing was made from hides and furs. Both men and women wore parkas, snow pants, boots, and mittens. In winter, two layers of each were worn. In the summer, only the inner layer of clothing was worn. The outer layer of clothing had the fur turned to the weather, and the inner layer, the hair was placed towards the body. This is an example of a caribou hide parka. Caribou hair is hollow, providing a high level of protection from the elements, and was extremely warm. Pants were generally made from seal skin, making them waterproof. Boots generally featured seal skin uppers and tougher walrus hide soles. Mittens could be made from seal or other fur-bearing animals. Sometimes they were even made from fish skins. If you want to explore traditional lifeways in the Arctic, you may wish to watch a documentary film produced by director Emmerich in the mid-1950s. You'll find this film on the Hudson Museum's YouTube channel. The museum also has examples of contemporary Inuit art, especially carvings from serpentine and soapstone. These carvings direct marine mammals, supernatural beings, and individuals engaged in traditional activities.